Good afternoon, everyone. This is Raisa here, Client Success Manager from CIO News. And I have with me today Mr. Pawan Dugil, Advocate of the Supreme Court. Welcome, sir. I would like to begin. What is your feedback on today's event at Seclore, sir? I find that today's event at Seclore is a great starting of a new journey. A journey of trying to understand and discover how the new existing law of India, being the Digital Personal Data Protection Act, is now propelling more and more stakeholders to start reviewing their existing compliances and to come up with new proactive technical and other approaches so as to deal with applicable laws. Clearly, uh, people tend to take data for granted in India, but with now law actually providing for uh, fines up to 250 crore rupees per contravention under the DPDP Act, the time has come that companies must start exploring new available tools which are driven by industry which are going to enable the corporate stakeholders to ensure compliance with law so clearly this particular uh, session has been a great learning uh, journey and also the very fact that there are so many questions is itself uh, the beginning of a new process where companies are saying let's try to protect ourselves let's try to use latest technological tools and let's try to do our best step possible so as to prevent our exposure to legal liability. Okay. I also wanted to know how do regulations like DPDPA impact security strategies? Well, DPDPA legislation, that's not on cyber security, yet it directly impacts cyber security for the very simple reason that data protection cannot be complete without uh, cyber security. So this particular law is a law which is in addition to the Information Technology Act 2000. Companies are mandated to put in appropriate technical and other measures so as to protect the data, its authenticity, veracity and correctness, specifically personal data of data principles. In this regard, apart from complying with the parameters under the DPDP Act, companies will also have to make sure that their cyber security is adequately protected and it's constantly beefed up. Why? Because all companies are intermediaries under the Information Technology Act 2000 they are mandated to put in place reasonable security practices and procedures when they are dealing, handling or processing third-party data, including uh, personal data. And I think it's in this context that cyber security compliances become of crucial necessity. Some compliances are stipulated by law, but a large number of these compliances have to be done as industry-driven lead standards for the very simple reason, if you are not going to make your data secure and if you are not going to protect it, then there are going to be uh, fines up to 250 crore rupees upon you as an organization. Further, your top management could be exposed to criminal liability of going to jail for imprisonment and fine respectively. So I believe that cyber security is now a crucial central lifeline theme for all stakeholders and that has to be given utmost priority in terms of compliances and in terms of constant updation by the stakeholders. And how can companies demonstrate uh, full compliance? Well, companies have a choice. They can either not comply or they can comply. So when they have to demonstrate their compliance, they will have to put in place appropriate documentation, which will be in the form of uh, policies, strategies, practices, procedures that they have implemented so as to go ahead and comply with the provisions of both the DPDP Act and the IT Act. In addition, the companies are also now required to put in place appropriate technical tools, appropriate software and other related tools which can help them automate the processes by means of which they can go ahead and protect data, specifically personal data of data principles. And it's in this regard that I think various offerings by companies such as Seclor can actually be of more relevance from the perspective of uh, the ultimate data stakeholders because these kind of tools will help the companies to ensure more compliance with the provisions of applicable law. And the last question, uh, can DPO and CISO roles be combined? Well, technically, there is no bar on combining the role of a CISO and a, a DPO. And a number of companies want to do that for saving costs. But I believe as we go forward, ultimately, these are going to be two separate set of rules and roles. And therefore, uh, they will have to be manned by two separate set of people. If you're going to put all your eggs into one basket, in the form of having both your DPO and CISO in the same person. You're not only going to massively increase the workload of the said person, more so 
the comprehensive time that's required for addressing various complex issues may not be available with the said person. Also, the liability of the said person is going to be quadrupling in the sense of massively increasing. So I believe, well, initially, since there is no bar, companies can go ahead and have the same person as CISO and DPO. But from an idealistic standpoint, from a reasonable uh, due diligence standpoint, it will be advisable that these two roles should be actually housed in two separate individuals within the organization. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your informative session and thank you for being part of this program here today. Thank you, thank you so much. much.